In this video, we're going to be talking about getting resources out of the ocean or how humans actually interact and use the oceans. And so one of the most obvious ways is actually getting salts. Remember, we talked in previous videos about all those dissolved solids which you can find in the water, uh, sodium, chlorine, but, um, magnesium, uh, sulfur, calcium, and all these things. And so um, by letting the water evaporate, you can theoretically get these salts. So there's several ways you can do this. You can heat up the water and like what is that, what's left behind is a salt or even better. Just let the water sit for a long time in an exposed contained place and then what you got left behind is salt. And you see here on the top, on the left hand side, the salt mining that's actually happening. And what basically what they do is they let a large area with seawater, they inundate the area of seawater and then isolate the seawater there so there's no currents to bringing new water in or out. And then they just let the water evaporate like a big puddle and what's left behind is rocks of salt so that's what's left behind and then they refine that salt and say it sell it as table salt or sea salt it's very actually interesting now the ocean, the other thing is actually the opposite which uh, which high, with rising demands for potable water around the world and with only a small percentage of the water that's available for us is actually potable drinkable water and even some of the fresh water a lot of it is in, in ice or underwater or underground sorry and so that means that a lot of the potable water is actually uh, missing we need a lot more water as the, as the human population grows and we don't, we can't necessarily just go out there and task the environments that need that water for for to maintain them so the demand for potable water has been rising especially in places like deserts which have very little water like for example so you see in Saudi Arabia they're actually trying to do this get the, something that looks like salt water and convert it into fresh water so you can see that's the idea what we're talking about now these processes are all called desalination or the process of removing the salt from the water and there's several ways of doing it and you see a desalination plant right here and they actually uh, at the same time get the salt out of the water so they get twice the resources and so and sell them both now basically how this work this is how it works there are several ways of desalinating the water one of the ways is actually the same thing you do in order to uh, get the salt you basically heat the water up and that's the one I'm talking about right here you heat the water up and then the water will evaporate and then it, it will hit on the top cold cold water and so that's like a container with cold water it's separated by a tiny little membrane and then that water that's hot water vapor will lose its heat to the cold water and it will condensate and so that will then fall down into a tube and be collected as fresh water. Now this water here is absolutely pure H2O because all the salts were left behind as the water boiled up. So that means that the salts are still here. Meanwhile, only the water evaporated and went down this way because salts have a much higher boiling point than water does and that allows you to separate the water. This process here is called distillation and we can actually use this in the lab to separate things and one of the things we can separate is the water out of the salt so that's a very interesting way to break a solution and so there you go that's one method the problem of course is you have to spend energy to cool this water up here and to heat this water down here and therefore it, it, it is a uh, energy consuming process which uh, solves the water problem but adds more problems of the energy to, um, necess necessity for energy of the city or, that's actually doing this an alternative method of doing this is actually by freezing. So imagine that you have a large uh, water um, bottle full of water and that inside this water you have salts. You have all these salts inside the water. They're dissolved inside the water. Now one thing that you can actually do is freeze the water. Now if when, as you freeze the water and you make a block of ice sitting on top of the water, all right, the salt does not go into the ice. Only the water does and so the salt is left behind. And so what you can do then is remove this layer of ice and then let it melt so you get this layer of ice so you remove it all right and then you allow that to just melt away into a puddle but this time the puddle is going to be pure water because none of the salt was frozen so as long as you don't freeze the entire uh, thing so the ice on the top will be fresh the same thing that happens in the oceans when they uh, ocean the pack ice pack ice is pack ice basically fresh water and which makes the oceans underneath a little saltier than, than, than they would be before. So the, during the winter, it's saltier. Now, freezing also consumes energy because you're going to need to lower the temperature and you're going to need to use a freezer or something like that to make this happen. And when you talk about large volumes of water, it takes a lot of power to either heat or to cool the water down. Remember, the water does not like to change its temperature. And when it actually evaporates, it takes a lot of heat with it which means either to make it cool down again from vapor it takes a lot of energy that means that both these processes desolation and um, 
Freezing requires a large amount of energy because the water has a high specific heat and a high heat evaporation. Now, in addition to that, there's another method called reverse osmosis. And on that method, you basically put a semi-permeable membrane. It's a membrane that blocks salt but not water. So it's, it's small enough to, the holes are small enough to let water through, but big, uh, sorry, it's big enough to let water through, but it's too small to let salt particles through. And then you put high pressure water, it makes it go through this membrane, and then the salts are all left behind, and then the what you get on the other side is fresh water. This is called reverse osmosis and it's a very advanced method of separating the water and you can do this in large volumes. The only thing is you have to uh, buy new filters or new membranes ever so often because they get clogged with salt after a while and that you also need to uh, put the water under extremely high pressure so it's still going to take some energy to pressurize the water and so to, to make it run through that membrane. Now I actually have one of these at home. It's a small scale one, but it cost me $300 to buy it, and then it's $50 every time I have to replace the filter. But I, I will go to gallons and gallons of water before I have to do that. So it's a very affordable way of doing it, and you can do it in large scale. And this, power, this plant that you see down here, it's actually reverse osmosis plant. But you see the smokestacks up here on the top because what's happening there is actually this, the, the power plant needs to burn some stuff to pre produce energy in order to uh, generate enough energy to actually um, release the, um, uh, the process is going to require energy and so forth. And so there you go. Uh, creating potable fresh water out of the oceans. Another thing that we use out of the oceans is actual minerals and actual electricity or electrical power. One way we can do that is actually get alternative energy through current or tidal power. As the tides come in and out or the currents move through the oceans, we can capture the kinetic energy of that motion of the water through turbines of several kinds of design. You see several examples here in the, in the, in the screen. And, this design, and what is going to happen is that these currents are going to be trapped with the, uh, the, the turbine and the turbine connects to a generator which then creates electricity out of the current power. We could do this on large scale and produce a lot of power for the U.S. The problem is that people are not wanting to invest in this kind of technology. And of course, you can only do it near the, um, the beaches where the water is available. But still, there's a lot of free energy there. Well, not free energy, but energy that uh, the Earth is creating. It's part of the Earth system. Tides created by gravity and currents created by uh, solar power of heating the oceans and the density differences of the ocean, that's going to happen naturally. We don't need to do anything. We can just capture that without necessarily affecting it. And that means it's a great deal to get, get good energy. And that's actually very promising to use hydroelectric power uh, out of current or tidal power. Um, the other form of energy that we get is a form of non-renewable energy that's called petroleum or oil. And we, well, it's basically that we do the same thing we do on land, but now we do it in the oceans because remember, the oceans can also have large oil reserves deep on the ground. So you, what, you, what you're going to have is this dark, is, is this deep on the ground. You may have a large, 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 large reservoir of oil, and then. Basically, what you want to do is you want to dig through through the rock to actually get to that oil. Now, as you can see, we have gotten better and better through the years. S since 1994, there actually have been several advancements in the technology of oil rigs, allowing us to dig deeper and deep, deeper and drill deeper and deeper into the water. And so, technology has been advancing. Now, you even have portable uh, oil rigs that can be moved back and forth as the thing... Um, as the reserve runs out. And another thing that happens too is that the drill itself is flexible. You see it here. You see there's a slant well and that actually allows you to, 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 to create an oil well that it slants into the ground. And then you can actually split it in several different wells. So each well can actually have many different uh, drills going in different directions trying to get as much as you can out of that oil reserve. And so advanced technology has improved the drilling process a lot. Uh, but as we still have a lot of accidents associated with either um, oil rigs themselves leaking as it happened on the big disaster of the oil well that blew up, the BP oil well in the, in the um, Gulf of Mexico recently, but also ships that are carrying oil and sometimes getting into wrecks or leaks from those ships. And there's several environmental disasters. Perhaps the worst environmental disaster in history was the Gulf oil spill. And so very dangerous, not to mention that by burning this oil you also pollute the environment. But definitely, as the energy demands are, are rising up, this is something interesting that we actually go into deeper and deeper into the ocean to, to get the oil out. Also, 
Remember nodules. We talked about this in the previous chapter. We talked about the fact that there are precious elements and trace elements and rare elements trapped inside potato lump rocks in the bottom of the abyssal plains. So what you can do is you can send machines to collect these nodules to mine them for their resources. And so we are trying to explore this these, uh, these, um, this uh, method as well to actually dig deep into the uh, abyssal plains to get these nodules full of minerals out of the ocean water. Another way that we use resources out of the oceans is we actually f eat out of the oceans. A lot of civilizations are, uh, 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 and societies today are based on, oil, on uh, fishing. And there's lots of kinds of fishing. There's fishing with, you know, the fishing rod. Uh, there's deep sea fishing. There's uh, drag fishing. Drag fishing is awful. It's when you get, basically you get a net over, uh, on one side and you put a net on the other side and you basically drag these nets toward each, towards each other and anything, any animal caught in between is basically um, caught. And so that's actually illegal in a lot of places because you're basically going to be killing animals which are not supposed to be killing, like this turtle here in the middle. Why is she doing it in a net? She shouldn't be, she's an endangered animal. She should not be doing, be caught. And so nets are very problematic. You also have these, uh, for bottom dwellers or bentos, you also have these cages where you put baits and then they draw, go into that side of the cage and they can only come in and they cannot come out. And that's how they crab fish. And you can see here another netting uh, process. And one that's not illegal is you can actually cast a net and then the net will basically close up, and then whatever is inside that net gets pulled back up, and then it's another way of doing that. And then you also have, obviously have things like whaling, when you initially shoot something with the harpoon and then drag it back to the surface. Uh, they do that with, to, to hunt for sharks and whales. And the problem with fishing is the endangered species, that uh, as fishermen have, want to meet the demand for their money and they want to uh, sell more, they, fi they overfish, even when they're uh, nowadays, we have quotas. They can't just fish or whatever they want. They they have to. They can only fish so much. But they overfish and they try to f sell it to different ports and things like that, because they're worried about uh, being able to meet their quote, meet, meet their demands of the of the pricing and things like that. And so overfishing causes the, the depletion of the food chain, which actually might damage the future generations and not make them able to fish. And so that's a serious problem that we have in the oceans, and that cause, uh, it's causing extinctions of all, all kinds of uh, fishes and, and whales and things like that. Not to mention the problems with drag fishing and other things like that. And a lot of people will do this in on international waters when there's uh, not a lot of regulation about how the fishing is actually being made, and so there's serious problems associated with this. Uh, an alternative to actually fishing is to actually doing something called aquaculture. When you basically uh, section off a, 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 an area of the ocean, or you create tanks, and then you grow the fish you want to have in the tanks or in the sectioned off area. What this does is that instead of destroying the ecosystem, you create your own mini ecosystem and grow the fish that you want. Now, the only problem is that sometimes you have to actually displace natural environments to do this, and sometimes they add chemicals to the water or food to the water that would not otherwise be there, and they might actually end up polluting the water or damaging the ecosystem by adding this extra food that's not supposed to be there. But still, it might be a better alternative to overfishing, so that's a, aquaculture is a promising way, especially tank aquaculture, which doesn't pollute the ocean water as much. And you see that in the bottom right here and the bottom left, uh, uh, middle bottom and bottom left. Now, the other thing that we use the oceans for is actually tourism or aquatourism. And that's actually going out there and diving or, or using the beaches, fishing, uh, going to visit the coral reefs, or just basically going on a cruise or on a boat ride in the middle of the ocean. Now, the problems with these things, you know, boat rides can kill the animals with the, with the propellers. Uh, divers can sometimes extract uh, specimens from the bottom and damage the coral reefs or other types of animals. And the coral reefs takes hundreds of years to recover from a, from a removal of something like that. And fishing can cause overfishing like we already talked about. Beach can cause pollution of the beaches and erosion of the beach area. And so there's a lot of problems associated with the tourism and inappropriate use of these areas. But the, perhaps the worst thing that humanity has done to the oceans is pollution. Basically, dumping trash straight into the ocean because nobody would regulate that. So barges full of trash will go out into the open ocean, open their drawers, and dump, dump the trash into the ocean. Oil spills, like I already talked about. Nets and other types of trash which actually hurt the animals. And then even worse, sewage. Industrial and, and residential sewage completely thrown into the water, as you see in these pictures. And then what you have is... Uh, unclean pollution damaging the environment and creating a very dirty, dirty uh, problem. And as society grows, uh, 
and we don't have a lot of management to make sure that nobody's doing these things illegal, more and more of this is unfortunately happening. For example, cruise ships can just go out into the open ocean when they leave the continent and open their doors and dump their trash and sewage because nobody's regulating it. And so it's a serious business, and we have to seriously consider our, our actions because it might seriously pollute the environment and cause problems for future generations and a destruction of the uh, food chains of, of the ecosystem.